Welcome. Hi. Welcome to the show. Problem. Oil. Oh, we just gushed it all out of the bottom of the car. That's not good. We got to figure out why. Probably has something to do with me just putting in the sandwich plate down there. But let's take a look. It is a leaky sandwich plate. So now we got to go figure out why. It might be hard to hear me, but we tightened it up. It doesn't appear to be leaking anymore. Um, there's a little bit of dripping. I think that's just from the um, uh, thing being left. But let me check. So we know. So we got the oil pressure gauge working. Um, voltage gauge is working. I don't know why our coolant temperature sensor isn't working. Um, it might need a better ground. We're gonna go see. Turns out it just needs a better ground. So we gave it a better ground temporarily. We're still dealing with the oil mess, but we got good oil pressure and the temperature reading is working. Um, I'm a little concerned about the voltage not working. So we might have to get in there and mess with the alternator again. Hopefully not. Losing voltage. So we gotta figure out why the alternator's not working. But we can deal with that at a later time. So we discovered the reason why we we're not getting any coolant pressurization here. We got a big old leak. It's not showing up uh, when the car's running, but as soon as you shut it off, oh boy, does that leak. So we gotta solve that issue. So hopefully that's our last little issue before the car um, goes kaput. Charging system's back to working. We're trying to get the tack working. We'll see if that happens. Um, well, yeah, until then, that's our tack sensor. We can probably try and cut that off. Until that happens, we can figure it out. All right. So it's a lot later. Let me show you exactly what happened. It can be easy. The housing here decided mm, 15 years not tw what 25 years of existing as uh, plastic was about enough so that broke and then back here broke and that's where all the uh, coolant leak was coming from so this is our replacement it's not the exact same but it should work and we will see i hope because nothing can be simple on this car and if you're going to modify why not just keep well, modifying you can hear me i have to talk rather loud because of all the noise we're doing a coolant flush that pours out of there. We're checking our new manifold for leaks. I don't see any leaks down there, which is good. It says the water pumps on, everything's going. We're checking our temp gauge and everything. We're still overcharging that poor battery. But we'll have to figure that out. We routed it up to there. This is just tap water. So now what we're looking, See if we get any pressure rise or any bubbles coming out of it now. There shouldn't be any, but we're waiting for this temperature to rise. It is like 30 degrees outside right now. The water has been freezing, which makes this a great day to do this. We're just trying to make sure that that rises up at some point. We may have to start up the... Um, uh, might have to rev a little. Everything seems to be running good. The idle, I don't know if you can tell in video, sounds a lot better. The cooling fan isn't making the screeching noise it's been making. Now we gotta figure out, we have a big mess of water in there from this overflowing into there, which is my stupid ass mistake, but we'll see, get that fixed. Everything works fairly good. disconnected um, besides this hose here we're just watching for some air bubbles to come up and see if anything comes out there shouldn't be any left in the system but we'll let it run for like five or ten minutes and get it um up to speed up to uh heat hopefully I'll sort it out while the motor runs i'm going to try and work on it Let's try it again so we're still trying to get this one sorted out we need to figure out why this is overcharging I think we can flip the two wires under there and get to it. And this one is good. So one out of three ain't bad. Accurate. We're in trouble, but we'll see. Hail out a mid-engine car. Because now I can say I have.
There's a reason I always say coffee uh, grind things like this that make perfect little containers, especially the new little plastic ones. They make perfect little containers for uh, throwing stuff out. And yes, all the junk is because between working on the car, I am cleaning up the garage. So, yeah, sorry, excuse the mess. So we routed the wires underneath the center console here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. You can see them down there a little bit. Up to here. We got the oil, the temp, and the voltage on here and working. We still gotta make sure the temp gauge is still sketch, but we'll get to that when we get to that. But it works, so now we can see what's going on on the inside of the car. So the smoke is from, it's not coming from the actual exhaust, which is weird. It's just coming from, if you look, it's not coming from there, it's coming from the wrap. So it's everything that's been around the exhaust that's been leaking. So we're gonna get everything here out of here. We're gonna clean up this giant mess and we're gonna get this garage cleaned up. New pad, we should get new pads for those. It looks nice, doesn't it? I think so. Hi, Pat. Hi. Uh, it does look pretty sitting out here on the, uh, in the world, being part of it, not being cooped up in the garage, which really needs to be cleaned out. Uh, and it went out and it worked so perfectly until that broke. Welded the shift linkage and now we have, oops, first, second, Third, that's fourth, third, fifth, and reverse. Reverse takes the most force, but they all work. So I accidentally welded it in wrong, where I didn't have any of the top gears, any of the top rows. So you'd think I would learn from all my mistakes, but that is not how I operate. I need to learn the same lesson a lot of times. So, hey, it works. And we're in sunlight which means you can see all the crap. Oh, hello, JDM thing. This is so I blend in as an MR2. 